I am at Edwards Gardens in Toronto, and tonight is an evening with Peter Chan. Here is the poster. Evening with Peter Chan, our special guest, the Toronto Bonsai Society. How exciting. Here is a look at the room tonight. It looks like a full house. Amazing. John and Peter. Here's Peter signing autographs. He's a very popular person. Hey guys! <laughs> Peter, <Hi>. Jerry, <laughs> hello. Already <laughs> my friend. Facebook and Instagram. Here's the stage all set up. The big screen should be exciting. Uh, if I could ask everybody to kindly take their seats. Uh, we're going to have Peter come on stage shortly, all right? Hello, everyone. Woo. Welcome to the Toronto Botanical Garden. Uh, if you haven't been here, it's a lovely place. Uh, and welcome to the Toronto Bonsai Society's event. Uh, we're really excited to present the Peter Chan this evening. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Terry Potra, and I'm the upcoming president of the Toronto Bonsai Society. And I'm Josh Shen. I am the incoming president. Uh, so first of all, I have to thank everybody who volunteered uh, today and a few days and weeks ahead of this uh, this event. Uh, we have so many people who helped out uh, with the two, two workshops, with the book sales, with today's event. So thank you very much to all our volunteers. And the last but not least, we'd like to thank all of you for coming out as well, uh, because it's a Friday night, and there are many goals. I guess Peter Chan is more popular than Barbie today. <laughs> uh, so we're really happy to be here and very honored uh, to be able to present Peter Chan this evening. Uh, the, uh, the, the way that evening will happen is the critique. Uh, so uh, we will pick out the, the names of the trees that we'll be able to uh, bring up to Peter for critique. Uh, Josh is going to be picking out three or five trees at a time so we can set them up. And uh, I guess Peter's going to try to get through as many as possible while we the critique uh, and discussion. If anyone uh, is happy for Peter to snip and clip the trees, please let him know. Uh, <laughs> Right up on stage. <laughs> if not, that's okay. Uh, there's also going to be an opportunity uh, for trees up to ask some questions. So this mic will be actually on the podium on the side. So we'll set it up for you so you can come and ask questions and uh, interact with Peter as well at that time. Uh, after the uh, critique is done, we will hold another raffle for the books for the books that are left over for sale. We only have four books left. I know that a lot of people are disappointed with that, it's just that amount, but Peter had a limited space in his suitcase. <laughs> so uh, we try to do the best that I can. So if you haven't gotten your raffle tickets, Carol and Brody at the back still have some available. Shout out to Brody and Carol. And uh, so if you, if you have gotten one, great. If not, uh, then I'm, I'm, please go get them. Uh, so after the critique is done, we will raffle off four tickets and that will get you the opportunity to purchase the, the tree, uh, the, sorry, the books, not the tree. The, tree, uh, the trees are not the same. Um, and then for the book signing? Yes, yes. Um, so the book signing is going to follow our little bit of intermission we're going to have. Uh, essentially how we're going to set it up is there's going to be uh, two lineups. If you uh, have not purchased the book today and you brought one with you, that is going to be one separate line. The second line is going to be for people who have purchased books today or uh, I'm assuming in the last workshops. All right. Uh, and after you've picked up your books or you're lining up, uh, we'll get you to uh, provide your name so that uh, Peter can easily uh, sign the book and dedicate it uh, to the book <laughs> signing, which will be held in the lobby. So there will be signage by the front door to let you know. And during that time, 
everybody else, uh, if you want to mingle, talk about the trees, we're going to have refreshments in front of the stage as well, and the evening will continue. Uh, so this is all bonsai, all evening. <laughs> <laughs>
and you must put your own stamp on it. I've already seen beautiful Canadian trees. Let us see more of a Canadian stamp to your bullseye, you know? So you can see what nature in Canada inspires you to make of these miniature trees. So it is with that background and ethos that I come into one's life. And so I don't believe in all these conventions and rules. You do what you wish. At the end of the day, why do we do bonsai? We don't do it for any other reason, but for enjoyment. As long as you enjoy it, that is all that matters. A lot of people get uptight that I've got to be the best, I've got to be the, do the best bonsai, I show the best bonsai. It doesn't matter a damn what you do. As long as you enjoy it, you enjoy it, that's all that matters. As long as it gives you peace of mind, that is what matters. Forget what other people say about your trees. You just enjoy it. And that is a way to get benefit from the art. You know, don't be influenced by other people. I know they can help you and guide you, but that must not be the end objective of all that. All that is for your own pleasure and to give other people credit. And I'm really, really blessed. I'm not really a religious person. I mean, not as a, as a spiritual person. And the way coincidences and fate comes into place, why did YouTube and digital media not come further into my life? <laughs> it came at the right time. I mean, if I have many more years to live, I'm 83 years old, I may not look it. But if I have a few more years to live, I think the divine being has destined me to be able to spread this message of healing and comfort to people. So, we are. and express my thoughts. I never hide my thoughts. One of the reasons why people have found my YouTube channel uh, interesting and helpful is that I try to convey what goes through my mind. Many people don't like to tell you their secrets, you know, whether they actually want to or feel shy about it, that's another matter. But when I look at a tree, I'm saying what goes through my mind and I hope that that helps you to get into my mindset and helps you to understand how to look at a bonsai, how to make bonsai, how to improve bonsai. So I don't know what uh, is the phone here now, uh, Carolina, do you need to do something or is the floor mine to start doing the pretty? The floor is yours, Peter. All right, okay, so without further ado, let us look at these trees. Please, all of these trees, please come. come uh, forward and tell us something about this tree. It's a lovely small leaf pot. Very beautiful tree. The number of years you had it, how long it has been trained. Hello, Peter. Um, welcome to Toronto, first of all. On behalf of Toronto Monster Society, we will be so happy to have you here. About the tree, um, it's a box of it. It's, I have a few of them. I've had it for about maybe 12 years, I think, and it was in a big tub of a It was a very large landscape of Oxford. So you made it from scratch? Yes. Okay, very right. beautiful tree. Beautiful tree. So what did you want me to say about this? <laughs> now, if it was someone else's tree or the conventional outside world, the first thing they would say is that this is a fault here. It's going up right, you know. Everything should be horizontal. But here you have a fault. And that is what made this tree nice. If you removed it, it wouldn't be quite right. So, as we say, I don't like to bring in all this culture stuff and Zen philosophy. One of the basic tenets of Zen or that type of mindset is that there is beauty in imperfection. If there's something imperfect, something which the rest of the world is not considered to be right, that in itself is beautiful. If you have some imperfection, that's beautiful. That's how you should view things. And that is what Bonsai teaches us. You, know? you don't have to be pitch perfect. You can be imperfect and yet be beautiful. And this is a 
Absolutely yes and no. This street, the parts going off, should not be there. But what made you leave it? Sir? What made you leave this project? Well, I actually took off a fair amount of the foliage. That lost about 60 or 70% of the foliage that was on it when I originally got it. I'm trying to bring branches down, but it's taking a really, really long time. Well, wood is very hard. Yeah. The you, branch saw, the, you have the box light in this country? Yes, that's my other question. Now, I know you guys have had it a lot in Europe, and we're struggling with it here, too. A lot of um, our hedges and a lot of our boxwoods um, are on side are suffering. What do you use in England, or what do you uh, use? They just cut up the box hedges and throw them away. They burn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not what you want to hear. I have one or two. I don't try to say it. I hope you have not with this. <laughs> <laughs>
while he was hanging out with Nigel. <laughs>
proceeds. It's a little bit going on some of the not slowly. It's starting to reduce because of the pot. I'm going to put in a smaller pot in the future as well. Okay. Um, and I don't fertilize it in the spring. Yeah. I was just thinking it was a good way to draw the pot. Have you ever thought of that? Oh. Uh, no, I haven't. What you could also do is you could consider doing a two chair course like that. Mm -hmm. One chair up, one out chair to go. That's a good idea.